I have a few minutes, a few seconds after six o'clock. So welcome to the Board of Public Works public hearing for Thursday, June 25th. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order sus suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GL chapter 30A subsection 18, and the governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This public hearing held by, East, by the East Hampton Board of Public Works will be conducted via remote participation. Public notice and remote participation instructions for this hearing were posted in the East Hampton City Clerk Office on June 11th, 2020, and published by the Hampshire Daily Gazette, Daily Hampshire Gazette on June 15th, 2020. This time I'd like to open with a roll call attendance. All right, we got Thomas Malsbury. Present. Austin Sanders. Present. And David Fagnan. Present. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion to open this public hearing on the establishment of new water and sewer rates and fees to cover a Department of Works FY21 shortfall on June 25th, 2020 at 6 p.m. via remote participation. Second the motion to open the public hearing. All right, well, we have a roll call vote on that. Oh, do I do that one too? Yep, okay. yeah, for every motion we'll have a roll call. Okay, Thomas Mosley? Yes. Austin Sanders? Yes. David Fetterman? Yes. All right, I'd like to introduce the, on this call we have uh, Greg Nuttleman, Interim DPW Director, and Zoe Ingram is filling in as our clerk for this evening. Uh, this is being recorded, broadcast live, and will be archived on East Hampton Media for all in attendance. Um, at this time, I'd like to give a rough outline of how I'm planning to conduct this public hearing. We're using Zoom's webinar feature. Um, so all the attendees can see the panelists, the board of directors, the, DP, uh, the board of public works, the DPW director, we have the mayor with us. Um, I'm going to give a quick presentation on the rate options that are before the board. Um, give a little background on the shortfall and the rates that have been developed as potential uh, solutions to that shortfall. Uh, after that, we'll receive some a recommendation from the DPW director uh, what the board, what the Department of Public Works would like the board to, to pursue. Uh, after that, I'm going to open it up to discussion between the board members. Um, we'd like to have time to sort of feel each other out and see where we are on the rates and answer any questions. Um, after that time, I wanna open it to public comment. Uh, the way we're gonna do public comment in this webinar is when we get to public comment time, um, all of you should see somewhere on your screen, normally towards the bottom, uh, you have the ability to raise your hand. Um, at that time, we're gonna work through whoever has their hand raised. Uh, Austin is gonna be the moderator for that. Um, he'll call out who's next in his queue. Um, you can, we can either give you permission to unmute yourself and allow you to talk. If you'd also like to be, have a video stream, we can grant you a panelist status. Um, you can join the, the queue or join the panel and address the board directly. Uh, we're gonna ask you to keep your comments to three minutes and direct it at the board. Um, we'll try to answer them or, or take that feedback uh, if we can answer them. And, we feel that the director or the mayor would like to speak on it, we'll give them that option. Um, we also had um, the ability for the public to comment in writing before the meeting. Uh, we, as of 3 p.m. today, we had not received any written comment to be re read into the meeting. Uh, at, at the end of that, I'm gonna close public comment. The board will deliberate as board, and then we'll take a vote. And after that, I'll make a motion to close the hearing. So, that being said, I will go over, let me share my screen. Well, before I do that, let me give you a quick overview um, of, of where we're at. Thursday. 
So for a little background, um, in May of 2018, the previous Board of Public Works voted and approved a series of water and sewer rate increases it was the water and sewer usage fees that would roll out as a 25 cent increase for fiscal year 19, a 10 cent increase for fiscal year 20, and then there is a, a planned 10 cent increase for FY21. Um, after discussion with the city auditor and the DPW interim director, Greg Nuttleman, it was determined that this rate schedule, scheduled rate increase of 10%, 10 cents. Um, in FY21 would not cover the increased DPW budget for fiscal year 21 based on fiscal year 20's budget numbers. Um, in talking with Greg, uh, he indicated that the water side of the, uh, the DPW could, could get by on uh, one year with that 10 cent increase in the water fees and that making up the shortfall would be beneficial to direct towards the sewer side of uh, the DPW for our planned infrastructure projects. At that time, I, uh, as the chair, worked up five rate models um, with uh, total water sewer bill increases from five to 10% over FY 20 to 21. Um, I took those to uh, Greg Nuttleman, and after reviewing it with him, we selected three that were sent to Ty and Bond for further analysis. Um, Time bonds used the same rate model that they had developed um, and presented in the water sewer stormwater rate evaluation that was presented to the Board of Public Works in October 2019. The rate model was expanded and updated using FY19 actual data and FY20 and 21 budget numbers. All the methodology and assumptions um, are explained in that 2019 document, which is publicly available in the Board of Public Works uh, file section of the city website. Uh, those three rate options were then presented to the board at the 617 meeting last week. Uh, we reviewed them and as the board decided to proceed with all of them for tonight's hearing so we could have a full discussion and debate of all three models with the public. Um, so the rates as outlined so this is a public handout that we made available this week for public review. Um, this is showing how we came up with the shortfall. Um, for FY21, the section here under the orange header, uh, it's basically showing the revenue that we would expect uh, given the usage we've seen. Um, it then works out. Uh, that we would be looking at about a $200,000 shortfall. Yes, Mayor, did you have a? I think she was uh, using okay. her screen. Okay. Um, so these are the rates as it, this, this is the schedule that would go into effect if we did nothing, if we allowed the 10 cent water and sewer increase, increase to go in. We would be looking at a net shortfall of about $200,000 um, and as you can see, the retained earnings um, would continue to erode as they have in the last year. With these uh, rates, as they're set to go into effect, we were looking at a net increase to the average user of uh, between 2.3 and 2.5%, depending on size. This 1,800 cubic foot per quarter size is what Time Bond had deemed in our February 2020 hearing as an average East Hampton user. So this first option that I had presented to the board would work out to what we are referring to as a 6% net increase. We would be looking at an increase in, you know, we would allow the 10 cent increase to go as planned for the water side. Uh, for the sewer side, we'd be looking at a base fee increase of 25 cents and the usage increase increased to five dollars, which is forty cents. Thomas, yes. Sorry. Are you trying to share those? I, I, I just don't see it. You're not screen. seeing my screen. I apologize. I thought I was working through the shared screen. I have the handouts, but if anyone's trying to see without them, I, I think it was for a moment, and then it went down. I apologize. There we go. Okay. Great. I must have unshared it. Actually. My toggling. 
All right, so I'll backtrack to the existing rates. So the existing rates, as they would go into effect on June, July 1st, uh, you can see basically we're, the way this model works, it's, it's a simple checkbook style model where we're basically taking the revenue that's expected minus the uh, expenses that are expected in the budget. Um, so for FY21, this is where I was saying we'd be looking at a roughly $200,000 uh, shortfall. This is the first option that I had presented to the board last week. Um, we'd be looking at a rate increase, letting the water rate increase go as planned uh, with a 10 cent increase and no increase in the base fee. Sewer fee, we'd be looking at a 25 cent increase in the base fee to 875 and a 40 cent increase in the usage fee to $5. Uh, this has the benefit of basically cutting the shortfall to about $80,000, $78,20. Um, and it helps us retain a little bit more. We don't erode as much as our, our retained earnings. Uh, for the user impact, um, for a small user, we're looking at a 6% increase in total bill of about $31 uh, for a 1,800 cubic foot user, which East Hampton or uh, Ty and Bond had determined as an average user, uh, we'd be looking at 6.1% or a $37 increase for the year. Uh, the next option, number two, would work out to be a roughly a 7% net increase for fiscal year 21. Um, that net revenue minus expense uh, gets us much closer, only about a $42,000 shortfall and retaining a little bit more of our retained earnings. This model is looking at a 75 cent increase in the base fee and a 45 cent increase in the usage fee to 925 and 505 respectively. Uh, this keeps all rate increases under 10% for each section and has a cumulative net effect of 7% on a combined water sewer bill for the year. So for our average East Hampton user, we're looking at a 7% increase and an annual increase from FY20 to 21 of $42.60. The third option that's before the board today is a, works out to a roughly 8% net increase for FY21. It's, you know, in the way this model works, I, I pretty much consider this one the one that closes the shortfall, showing here a, a, a shortfall of $1,931. Again, we'd have, we're, we would be allowing the standard or the pre-scheduled 10 cent increase in the water use fee to, to continue. And we'd be looking at a $1.25 increase in the base fee for sewer and a 50 cent increase in the usage fee to 510. For our average East Hampton user of 1800 cubic feet per quarter, that works out to a 7.9% increase and a total annual increase from FY20 to 21 of $48.20 over the year. So those are the three rate options, well, four rate options, uh, the, the take no action and allow the existing increase to roll into effect on the first, or option number one, option number two, and option number three. So the board has had these numbers for the past week, and I'd be interested in hearing your your thoughts and any additional questions you have for me that we couldn't address in the presentation on last Wednesday. Yeah, I thought we went over, I thought we went over it pretty well last Wednesday, as a as pertains to the the increases and. Uh, I'm interested to see where uh, what the director thinks and uh, the public. All right, I know Boston. You had a few questions that I wasn't comfortable answering in the standard presentation meeting. Uh, do you have anything you'd like to have some clarification on, or no? You had mostly, de mostly deliberation at this point that you'd like to engage in. Sure. You had mentioned. You had uh, mentioned. A moment ago, that option three um, uh, closes the shortfall. Um, that that was the 
that was one of the largest benefits of option three? It is. I mean, you know, there is, these are models, you know, they're not actuarial table, you know, this is our, our best guess based on the modeling of consumption and the expected budget. You know, we could have another emergency, but that's what the, you know, retained earnings are for, which is why we don't want to continue to have them erode. Um, hmm. I, I, what I wanted to say in the meeting, but didn't feel comfortable till here, the FY, the, the 7% option, you know, it's, it's only a $42,000 shortfall, which in the, you know, the, the models are conservative. You know, we, we are also going to see some additional, what we're hoping to see additional consumption by Southampton uh, now that we have the new automated interconnect. So we, that's a revenue stream we don't have a, a good handle on. You know, it was manual before and, and, you know, Greg has indicated we may see some additional usage from that. So that, that may be some other income we have. FY20, you know, we're showing a, a shortfall for, for this year as well. Um, but the last quarter of consumption since uh, the pandemic has been in place, we've actually seen a slight uptick in um, consumption. So we may end FY20 a little stronger with, you know, I, I guess between the incredibly dry weather we've had and increased water consumption from hygiene, you know, we may we may have a little bit more revenue from FY20. Um, I mean, all of this is, as we discussed in, in the previous meeting, um, this is a stopgap for FY20. This does not address a long-term solution. Um, the previous series of rate increases were put into place with the assumption that, um, you know, at the end of the October 2019 rate set, uh, that a long-term plan was going to be put into place for stormwater and capital improvement, which we've now, you know, pushed off for one year, which I think is is wise. But this is really just to get us through, you know, FY20. And you can see that none of these models really leave a FY22 in a in a strong position. You know, I I think we need to try and not erode as much as we can, but you know. The seven percent model might get us by with increased consumption at the end of FY20 and, and some other, but you know, if we really want to close the shortfall, the eight percent would be, you know, more on that target and and also put us in a better standing for you know when we reevaluate a long-term rate and capital plan, which I'd like to do after we, you know, address this. I, I'd like to I'd like the board to get working on a, on a long-term plan sooner than later. So we're not, you know, cramming it in at the end of the fiscal year and we can have time to work with public and, and get some buy-in, so. Right. That's, a, that's important. All right, so I think next on our agenda, if the board feels we've presented what we need to for the public and we can get a, we can get yeah. Greg's Greg's input from the DPW, if, if he'd like to share it with the board. Yep, I think um, given the goal here being closing the shortfall, if the option three 8% rate is the closest to doing that, I, I think in, as director, with what we're dealing with, with aging infrastructure and the need to have funds available to overcome failures of which you know, I can't tell you what's going to break in the next year. Um, you know, this week we're working on cutting the roots out of the uh, Connecticut River outfall from the wastewater plant. And, and that project cost more than $100,000. Um, it needed to be done in an emergency um, time frame. So, I mean, I'm, I'm very sympathetic to the uncertainty of, of the, you know, the world right now and, and the pandemic. But um, I, I do need to stress to folks that the, you know, our infrastructure is aging and we, we need to start addressing, um, you know, what the things that come along with that. Most of the sewer system is well past its, its expected uh, service life. And we need to get, um, we need to get, get going on, um, uh, on some replacements and repairs and there's, uh, projects all over town. So, um, my recommendation would be to 
keep the retained earnings in as strong of a uh, position as possible. And I believe option three would be a 8% increase does that. So my uh, advice to the board would be to move forward with uh, option three, the 8% increase. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Um, Mayor, I know we didn't talk about this, but do you have any interest in speaking before public speak or after or as a member of the public? Hi. Okay. Thanks. Um, well, one, I, I want to thank the, the board and especially you, Tom, as chair of, of kind of reexamining and slowing down, um, you know, the process and doing all the side work with the charts and bringing time bond back in and listening to the public, but also, you know, leading this board into to really um, putting things down into granular steps. Um, and putting together a stopgap option and then working forward with given the transition in the department for a long term. Um, and I do, I, I know service on this board is not easy and it does not go without public comment. So I, I appreciate you all three stepping forward and interim director Nettleman, um, thank you for jumping in and, and filling the gaps and bringing your team along. Um, with you to to look at these these issues and what we can do um, with aging infrastructure, but also acknowledging what's going on in the world. Um, I like the um, uh, eight percent increase option and getting that shortfall as closed as possible because I think um, I know all too well that there can be no shortfall and then something breaks and and we're we're scrambling pretty fast um, for dollars and we are long past the time where we can say, oh, this year might be okay and nothing big's gonna break. Um, we just need to expect those things to, to happen. I also, the other side of the short-term gap, uh, the stop gap that, that you're, that's before the board right now, is it also gives the Department of Public Works and my office and planning to take stock of, of grants that we can better match to the big projects we know we have to take care of. And the municipal vulnerability project, the, the grant we just put in is, is a great example. So to, to be able to relook um, at the DPW um, functioning in water and sewer in particular, wastewater, the plan, um, be able to put together a long-term plan that really we have buy-in on grants and we know you know, we have some more options for funding. I, I'm looking forward to build out, but, um, you know, I don't get a vote, but I, as, as mayor and a member of the public, I, um, that 8% increase sounds really great. I mean, yeah, increase. No, it sounds good. We have to take care. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mary. Just for the record, I'm no longer sharing my screen, correct? No. Yes. Okay. Correct. Correct. Okay. Just before I start opening random tabs, I wanted to. All right. So, as I said, you know, at this point, I think we're going to, we're ready to open this hearing to public comment, and, and the board really is interested in hearing your, your, your thoughts and opinions on this. You know, it's not a pleasant topic for for anyone to have to deal with, but you know, we, we really want everybody's comment. Uh, as I said, we're gonna try and keep this to three minutes per speaker. Um, if you have any interest in speaking to the board, uh, you can utilize the raise hand feature and Austin Sanders will moderate and unmute and allow you access to video if you would like. So this point, anyone would like to raise their hand. We also have one call-in uh, member here, so at the end, I'll specifically ask them if they would like to be unmuted. Uh, I don't believe they have the ability to raise their hand. So um, it looks like. Yep. We have one person whose hand is raised, so I'm going to call on uh, Joe uh, Landers to be uh, promoted to panelist. And they are, they are now a panelist, and I ask to unmute. 
and um, they can uh, provide their screen if they wish to. Looks like she's still muted. There it is. There we go. Uh, can you hear me now? Unmuted there. Joe, yeah. if you could just uh, state your name and address for the clerk. Joe Landers, 27 Howard Ave. Thank you. Um, two points of just general information for you folks, and then I'll have some specific questions. Sure. Uh, one is, just so you're aware, you folks were live well before 6 o'clock. OK, thank you very much. <laughs> um, and it's the way that the city website is set up right now. I'm pretty computer savvy, and I have a hard time finding information because calendar meetings are not linked to agendas, and agendas are not linked to or include URLs for handouts. So that seems kind of like a problem, especially with the remote meetings and the fact that the handouts weren't on screen for quite a bit of the time, et cetera. It would be great if we could start including the URLs if there are handouts. And it would be wonderful if there was a way to link the meeting agendas and or the handouts right to the calendar. Because you have to go to three completely different separate sets, places on the website to find all three pieces of information. All right, I'll speak with the clerk about that. Okay, so um, when was the last time the rates were increased just to get a sense of what the rate increase is gonna be like compared to inflation? And I'm wondering if the city with rate increases would consider if a homeowner wanted to pay for the expense of revisiting the idea of metering out an outside faucet separately if someone wanted to do that. I believe the last rate increase uh, votes were in, let me see. I believe they were in May, May of 2018. Uh, the previous board voted in a series of three rate increases, one that went into effect in 2019, which was 25 cents, one that went in in FY20, which was 10 cents, and one that was scheduled to go in FY21 for 10 cents. 10 cents on? On uh, the usage fee, so it's 10 cents per 100 cubic feet of water. And As compared to an existing rate of? I'm, lo I'm looking for percentage increases, not dollar amount increases, because dollar amount increases aren't going to tell me how much a bill is going to go up. Uh, That's I, why I'm asking this question. As I said, I'm just trying to compare it to inflation, because I have a feeling that 8% is probably reasonable, but it's hard for me to tell unless I go back and start back tracing all my water bills to look at what the rates were in the past. Um, I do have that information. Um, what's the best way to get to it? Um, I don't have it readily available. Um, okay, so anyways, that's a, a point of information that I think might be useful. Okay. Um, yeah, I do. I mean, when I was developing my my rates, um, I, I had requested all the historic rates, so I have the rate increases since, I believe, early 2000s. Uh, just not something I have at my fingertips right now. Oh, and the other question I had besides would the city ever consider um, um, allowing the separate meters is I see stormwater listed on all the documents from Ty and Bond, and I know we're going to be more than likely having a stormwater quote unquote tax coming into the city. Well, did you, account, did you account for that? Because I don't see any dollar figures for it in the tie and bond reports when you're looking at what the deficit is for the water and sewer well, treatment and maintenance. As, as of right now, stormwater costs are still um, managed in the sewer enterprise fund as they've been historically. In the February 2020 public hearing, that the basis of that was whether or not to break it out into its own enterprise fund. As of right now, we're going to continue to incur all stormwater costs in the sewer fees. Um, that's something that the board is going to look at, you know, moving forward for the for the long term stabilization of, of costs and expenditures. So, so, of, so if we have this rate increase, and then there's also a decision to add a stormwater tax. <laughs> How does that end up affecting the rate increase? Because it would certainly reduce the deficit. Yes, if if you if you look back at the handouts um, from the February 2020 presentation, 
when the stormwater enterprise was proposed, uh, th those costs were taken out of the sewer enterprise operational expenses, and I believe it was reflected in the uh, sewer rates actually going down a little to, you know, since they were moving to a new enterprise center. Okay, I, I don't really feel like my question was answered, but I'll, I'll stop here. Well, if, if I, I, I must have misunderstood. I, I thought you were asking about the stormwater costs. And I, I, no, I'm asking about the stormwater amount that would be billed to the residents separately from the water and sewer and how that would offset, whether or not that would end up offsetting some of these increases. Is there a plan to do that? That's what I'm saying, that that is beyond the scope of this public hearing, and that's what we're going to be addressing before the next fiscal year. We're okay. going to, because it's, it's, we're going it's, to revisit the proposals and models that were, were presented in February 2020 in a new series. This, the, the purpose of this hearing is purely to stabilize and fill the sh shortfall for FY21 under the existing enterprise models. Okay, so you're saying stormwater is not a factor in any of these calculations, and if it does become a factor, then these calculations would be revisited in a future fiscal year? Yes. Yeah, this, this is purely to close the roughly $200,000 shortfall uh, in expected earnings between FY20 and FY21. Uh, we're not changing any of the enterprise models. We're, we're, we're just trying to adjust the fees to match the reality of what the DPW has on its plate for FY21. Okay, thank you. Yep, sorry for any confusion I caused. Um, and Joe, just a comment, may I comment at this point? Or yes. she had a question about outdoor meters. We, we do have a, a program um, to allow for them through the Agricultural Commission and whether a property qualifies for agricultural status. So there, there is a way to get one that we don't build sewer on. However, right, but it's not available to the average homeowner with a large vegetable garden. You, my understanding is as of right now, you have to have like five acres. Yeah. And, and you know, that's a really, I, I can understand the frustration with that. I, I talk to residents about it all the time. And, it, and it's a challenging thing for us because if we begin allowing those, the people that have the means to in, in, in afford for their installation you know, end up not paying the sewer fee. And then yet the cost to operate the sewer department and wastewater treatment plant stays the same. And it, it, what we end up having to do is raise rates, and, which begins to unfair, you know, impact people that can't afford that, that second meter installation. And it, it can really put others at a disadvantage that aren't you know, of the means to uh, pay for the second meter installation and purchase. And I know that's not a great answer. There, there really isn't a great answer to that yeah, question. Yeah, no, because the other, the, other, the other side of that would be to say that it targets the sewer fee to the people that are actually using sewer. I actually probably use more water in my garden and, and than I use in my house based on what I see with my water bills when there is a drought. I mean, I have rain barrels and things like that that avoid both fees, but my rain barrels have been dry. We haven't actually had rain since April 18th. <laughs> Yeah. Other than a 15 minute thunderstorm. <laughs> yeah. And as but I, I just wanted to circle back to that briefly to, to, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And just for your knowledge, the, you know, like I said, that is beyond the scope of, of this hearing. But one of the things I'm interested in looking at um, as we move forward is if we're revamping the, you know, potentially creating a third stormwater enterprise, does it make sense to revisit the rate structuring of? the existing water and sewer. Um, so we better capture the hard expenses in a, in a usage fee. And then, you know, cause the problem we're having right now is uh, with reduced water consumption and more efficient fixtures every year, the gallon, you know, the, the, the hundred cubic feet, the gallonage of water pumped is, is dropping between one and a half and 2% a year. But our sure, and, still, and you still have to pay a person to be there and right. their salary hasn't gone down, and you yeah. still have the facilities fees and exactly the, the, the fixed the space costs, no matter what, just to have an, a plant that's doing nothing. Right. Yeah. It, it doesn't really change how much water goes through. It does marginally, and, and that can be what a usage fee is for. But the the actual hard costs of running a water treatment plant are are fairly fixed, and and they go up about 
roughly 3% a year, and our consumption goes down 1.5% to 2% a year. So right in that discrepancy, you, that's where these rate increases keep coming from, is, is that disparity. So, you know, I've looked at other models, and, and maybe something we address as a board, you know, looking at, at alternate models that other communities use to to not be in this position every every couple of years. So I just want you to know that that this isn't, you know, I don't want this to be a perpetual cycle either. So if, if we can look at ways of making it equitable and and sustainable, the, you know, I as a chair am open to that. So we would welcome any public comment on that when we do get to that process. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we still have several of our attendees. Would anyone else like to speak at this time? If you could um, raise your hand in the attendees list and um, would the mayor like to speak? Well, she did. <laughs> the hand raised. Oh, she had her hand raised, I see. And would anyone in the attendee list like to speak by raising their virtual hand? Virtual hand, which can be done. The instructions for Thomas, do you or David, do you remember where the hand raising feature? When I was an attendee, it's on the screen. It's, it's at the bottom of the screen when, when we're not hosts, I believe. It may disappear if your cursor is not there. Yeah, if you hover over the bottom. Yeah. It's in the bottom middle of the screen. You've got to have to hover your cursor over it. Okay. All right. We do have one call in, uh, phone number ending in 2796. If you'd, Should like, I... if you'd like to speak, I'm gonna allow you to talk. You don't have to. I'll give you about 20 seconds and then uh, remove you. All right, at this time, I feel we've heard from all the public that we that wish to speak to the board. This time, I'm gonna open deliberation. I'm gonna close public comment and open deliberation amongst the board members. I'm very interested in hearing what, what both of you think and how you'd like the board to, to move forward. Yes, what is the uh, 2796 as a panelist uh, still? Or or they've been... Uh, uh, I just... Un, uh... Should I disable uh, talking? I gave them permission to speak. I guess it somehow moved them to... Uh, panelists, but I'll uh, disable talk. Yep. Talking. I believe it's been 20 seconds. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That looks like they've. Okay. Thank no you. longer a panelist. Sorry for interrupting. Did you had you made a initial motion, Thomas? Um, I, don't, I don't know if we need to make motions. I'm just, I, I'll make a motion to close public comment then. Um, I'll second that motion to close public comment. Okay, we'll do a roll call. Sure, Alex. thank you, Zoe. I think I'm on mute, okay. Thomas Nelsberry? Yes. Austin Sanders? Yes. David Fagnan? Yes. Motion carries. All right, we'll move on to deliberation. You've all got a 
sense of where I stand on the issue, developing the rates and all. So I, I'd like to hear the board's input mm -hmm. and uh, feel free. I'm in agreement with um, uh, option three, which is the um, 8% rate. Right. Yeah, well, obviously realizing for everybody at this time, any rate increase is difficult. <clears throat> I, I favor option three to take us through I think what we're going to have to do over the next few months, six months or so, and uh, I was very happy to hear your ideas, Thomas, about we do need to get this under control and get to a long-term plan, so, and present something to the residents of East Hampton as a board. Yes. So they know where we're going, where this is going, so. I agree. This is just a stopgap, and... I think we need to give uh, DPW the the monetary assets that they may need to, to get through the next year and a half here, or fiscal uh, calendar year and a half. So, yeah, I don't I don't disagree with that. And and like I said, I came into this meeting with the hope that we could get public buy-in for the for the seven percent, um, and that if everyone really understood, you know, sort of how long this has gone on un, unmanaged, not unmanaged, but right. uh, underfunded, you know, just sort of getting by year to year, you know, the 8% really puts us in a, in a, you know, it works out to roughly like $6 more a year than, than, op than the 7% option for the average user. Um, and I feel like that's, uh, you know, Given the times, it's it's still an ask, but if if every average user can can help the DPW be stable and it puts us in a better position, you know, when we have to you know revisit this, um, I, I I could support the eight percent. You know, like I said, I came in hoping for the seven, and and the eight would be uh you know close the shortfall and 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 pre present uh prevent further erosion, well, not some further erosion. Um, so I, I'm glad to hear the DPW and mayor both supported that and, and my two fellow board members also support that. That is, that is very reassuring. And, and the feedback that we got in the 17th presentation this evening, both, both under, seem to understand that, that the DPW is in a position where, you know, we have hard decisions to make and, and you know, as long as I think we present why we're doing it and and show the justification for why it's necessary and that it's even across the board. Every the seven percent model works out basically for seven percent for all users in the uh, calculations. Right, right. I'm, I'm glad to hear both of you support that. All right. You have any other deliberation or comments, or you're you're both in agreement and would like to pursue? Mm -hmm. Austin, the head shake was confusing. I don't have I don't have anything to add to that. Thank you. Asking for consensus and getting a head shake was confusing. Sorry. No, I, it was it was. Uh, I asked two questions. One of these. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not, nothing to add. Nothing to add. Understood. Um. Well, that. But this is this was a good meeting, and I'm I'm glad it went went how it did. So, um, at this time, I I guess I'll make a motion to uh, well not make a motion, but we'll we'll work through the motions um, for rate option number three, the cumulative eight percent net increase. Um, I'll make a series of motions for the procedural. Um, for the procedure needed to uh, change the rates. So at this time, I'm going to make a motion to leave the FY21 water usage rate unchanged from its scheduled July 1st, 2020, 10, 10 cent per 100 cubic foot increase. Can I get a second? I will second. 
All right, Zoe, can we have a roll call vote? Yep. All right, Thomas Nelsberry? Yes. Marston Sanders? Yes. David Fagnan? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. At this time, I'm going to make a motion to rescind the FY21 sewage usage rate increase of 10 cents scheduled for July 1st, 2020. Can I have a second? Second the motion. All right, Thomas Nelsberry? Yes. Austin Sanders? Yes. David Bunyan? Yes. Motion carries. At this time, I'm going to make a motion to increase the FY21 sewer usage rate to $5.10 per 100 cubic feet, effective July 1st, 2020. Can I have a second? Second. Thomas Nelsberry? Yes. Austin Sanders? Yes. David Fergnan? Yes. Motion carries. I'm going to make a motion to increase the FY21 sewer base fee to $9.75 per quarter, effective July 1st, 2020. Can I have a second? Second. I second. All right. Thomas Nelsberry? Yes. Austin Sanders? Yes. David Fagner? Yes. Motion carries. All right. All right, well, thank you, board. At this time, I'd like a, to make a motion to close this public hearing. Second. Okay, Thomas Nelsberry. Yes. Austin Sanders. Yes. And David Fagnan. Yes. Motion carries. All right. Thank you, everyone, for your time, and thank you, public, for attending. Thank you. Time, I'll... Thank you. Have a good thank night. You. Good oh, night. Tom? Wait, yes. Tom? So you closed the public hearing, but did you adjourn the meeting in a separate vote? No, thank you. Is that... Okay. Yeah. Uh, cool. <laughs> At this time, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn this hearing and thank the mayor. Second. Thank you all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tom Nazari. Yes. Austin Sanders. Yes. David Pagner. Yes. Okay, motion carries. Have a good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Good night.